If you have your Bibles this evening, Romans chapter 14. And we're just going to read along and make some comments as we go. But I want to talk to you about a very important matter. Romans chapter 14. And we'll begin with verse 1. Father, we thank you for the privilege of being back at Mab Scott Baptist Church. I thank you for Pastor Doug. Lord, I thank you for what you're doing in this place. Lord, I'm not here to see or to be seen. I'm not here to entertain nor to be entertained. Lord, I'm on a mission. And Father, I ask that you'll touch me tonight as unworthy as I am. I pray that you'll see fit, that you'll be pleased to anoint me tonight as I share your word. And may the Spirit of God captivate the hearts and the minds and the attention of every soul under this roof. We commit these next few moments into your hand. Have thine own way. And we're going to thank you for it even now. We give you praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Romans chapter 14, verse 1. Him that is weak in the faith, receive ye, but not to doubtful disputations. He that is weak in the faith, any time you see the expression, the faith, it's talking about the true, the pure religion of Jesus Christ. There's only one true, one pure religion, and that is religion. I don't like the word religion, but for lack of a better word, there's only one true religion, and that is the religion of Jesus Christ. And when you see the expression, the faith, that's what it's making reference to. It's more than just faith as in believing God. It is the faith in the family. It makes reference to the building of God, the bride of Christ. It makes reference to the body of Christ, the faith. Now, if you study your Bible, in Acts chapter 16 in verse 5, the Bible talks about being established in the faith. In 1 Corinthians chapter 16 in verse 13, the Bible tells us that we're to be steadfast in the faith. In Colossians chapter 1 and verse 23, we are to continue in the faith. Yes. There's no place to quit. In 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 5, the Bible admonishes us to examine ourselves in the faith. In 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 13, Paul talked about having boldness in the faith. In Titus chapter 1 and verse 13, Paul mentions being sound in the faith. And in the book of Titus chapter 3 and verse 15, Paul mentions the love in the faith. We're to love in the faith. But in Romans chapter 14, Paul makes an unusual reference 
to the faith. Most of us are familiar with continuing in the faith, being established in the faith, being sound in the faith, being bold in the faith. But in Romans chapter 14 and verse 1, Paul makes reference to those who are weak Amen. in the faith. The word weak comes from the Greek word asphenio. The word asphenio is often translated into our Bibles as the word sickness. The word asphenio is translated in our Bibles as the word infirmity. When Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 talked about his infirmities, I will rather glory in my infirmities. It's the same word, aspinio. And the word weak suggests to be unhealthy spiritually. Paul is talking about those who are unhealthy in the faith. Yes. They're saved. Right. They're in the faith. Right. But spiritually, they're weak. Spiritually, they are unhealthy. Amen. And Paul said that we are to, watch this, receive those who are weak in the faith. Receive those who are unhealthy in the faith. Why should we receive them? The Bible tells us in the latter part of verse 3, for God hath received him. Amen. Paul said receive those who are weak in the faith. They may not be healthy spiritually. Right. But we're not to cast them out. We are to receive those who are weak or unhealthy in the faith. Now, the word receive means to accept someone in spite of their problem. To accept someone even though they may be different. We have a tendency to like those who are like us. Yeah. Amen. We have a tendency to accept those who believe just like we believe and they comb their hair just like we comb their hair and, and, and they dress just like we think they ought to dress. We have a tendency to accept those who are like us. That's right. But here Paul is saying receive those who are weak in the faith. Amen. They're unhealthy spiritually. Now who were those who were weak in the faith? There were certain people in Paul's day that were having serious problems leaving the rituals of Judaism. Yeah. Yeah. It was difficult for them to leave Mount Sinai. It was hard for them to leave the law and embrace grace. Right, right. It was difficult for them to leave Mount Sinai and to move on to Mount Zion. And Paul refers to them as being weak in the faith. Now watch this. 
there were three major disputes among the believers at Rome. Number one, there was a dispute about their diet. Right. Yeah. Some people believed that it was wrong, that it was a sin to eat meat. Period. In the south part of the country, they were very health oriented. And they were all vegetation uh, or, or ve what? Vegetarian. Vegetarian. Yeah, what did I say? I don't know what I said. <laughs> they were vegetarians. They were vegans. They didn't eat meat. And they looked down on anybody that ate meat. They criticized anyone that ate meat. You had another group that believed it was okay to eat meat as long as that meat had not been offered to idols. Right. You see, there were pagans in Paul's day, idolaters in Paul's day, that would offer certain animals to their idol god. Perhaps they would offer a lamb or a goat or even a bullock, a cow, to their idol god. Right. And the remaining part of the sacrifice would be taken down to the marketplace and could be bought at a real good deal. You could save big. Right. And there were those among the believers at Rome who saw nothing wrong with eating meat. They saw nothing wrong eating meat that had been offered to idols because there was absolutely no deity at all right. attached right. to some pagan or heathen god. And so they thought it was all right to eat meat. And they would go down to the marketplace and buy it cheap. Yeah. But you had some over here that looked down on and criticized anybody that ate meat, period. Then you had another group that criticized those who ate meat that had been offered to idols. And then you had another group that said, I'm saved by grace and there's nothing wrong with eating meat. There's no deity to attach to an idol. So I'll eat meat even offered to idols. Right. And, and strangely enough, Paul refers to those who would not eat meat and those who would not meet, eat meat offered to idols as the weaker brethren. But Paul said, receive them. Right. There were those who disputed over days. Yeah. Certain days. Under the law, there were certain days that they were to observe. Days that had been set aside as holy days. And they felt that it was wrong to violate those special days that had been set aside. They had even created their own days that they observed. Yeah. And then you had another group that said, we're saved by grace. And they didn't look at one day, every day, as far as their work, right. they were concerned, was God's day. Yes. Right. Amen. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, all week long was God's day. 
And so they didn't observe certain days or special days. And once again, do you know who Paul looked at as the weaker brethren? Those who observe certain days. Yeah. But because of their diet, because of these days they observed, there was division among the believers. Right, right. And what happened was because of these days and because of certain diets, they were judging each other. Right. And so in Romans chapter With judging others in verse 4 of chapter 14 he said this who art thou that judgest another man's servant to his own master he standeth or falleth Yea, he shall be holden up, for God is able to make him to stand. He said, one man esteemeth one day above another, and another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. He that regardeth the day, regardeth unto the Lord. And he that regardeth not the day to the Lord, he doth not regard it. Whatever you do, just do it unto the Lord. Amen. If you want to observe certain days, go ahead. Just do it unto the Lord. If you don't want to observe certain days, then don't do it. But don't observe them unto the Lord. Just stop judging Amen. one another. Good. He said in verse number 6, He that eateth, eateth to the Lord. For he giveth God thanks. And he that eateth not to the Lord, he eateth not. And giveth God thanks. For none of us liveth to himself, no man dieth to himself. He went on to say, For whether we live, we live unto the Lord. Whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live therefore or die, we are the Lord's. He's leading up to something. Yeah. For to this end Christ died and rose and revived that he might be the Lord both of the dead and the living. But why dost thou judge thy brother? Paul said, Jesus died and he rose again. Yes. That he might be Lord over all. So why are you judging your brother? Why are you judging another man's servant? Did you know when we sit in judgment on somebody else, we are assuming a responsibility that belongs only to Jesus? We're making ourselves some kind of a God. Right. You didn't die. I didn't die. We have not risen from the grave. Right. And it's not my place. It's not your place Amen. to judge others. Amen. It's wrong. Right. Because it's not your work. Paul said, 
in verse number 11, for it is written, as I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall confess to God. So then every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. Amen. Let us not therefore judge one another anymore. Now listen to what he's saying. They were arguing about days and diets. Right. Right. And this group was criticizing this group and this group was criticizing that group. And this group thought they were more spiritual than this group because they would not eat meat. And this group thought they were more spiritual because they wouldn't eat meat offered to idols. And so they were criticizing one another. And Paul said in these verses, I want it to stop. Right. Amen. He said, let us judge not stop and Paul said I want it to stop now quit criticizing somebody because they're not just like you right in our day it's not days it's certainly not dies in our day it's dress right it's music right it's it's a style of, of worship. And we argue and we judge one another and we criticize each other. And Paul said, I want it to stop and I want it to stop right now. Hey. Receive those that are weak in the faith. They may not be as strong as you are. They may not be as healthy spiritually as you are. But receive. Because God received. And Paul said, I want the judging to stop. We're not to judge. Man. We're not to judge one another. I promise you, every one of us in this room has been guilty, including myself. Amen. I experienced such conviction as God was speaking to my heart about these verses, and I wanted to apologize to the world because I've been guilty. Amen. Guilty. But it's not my work. It's not your work. Paul said, get this, Jesus died. He rose again so that he might be Lord over all. Right. You say, but preacher, they're not right. They're doing wrong. Paul said, every one of us will give an account of himself to God. Right. Judgment belongs to the Lord. He says in this chapter, we're all going to appear at the judgment seat of Christ. God said, as I live, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall confess to me. God and God alone is the judge. It's not my word. Number two, we're not to judge. Because we're not worthy. That's right. We're not worthy. That's right. They brought a woman in John chapter 8 to Jesus that had been taken in the very act of adultery. They said to Jesus, We caught this woman in the very act. Moses said, She's to be stoned. What sayest thou? And Jesus stooped down and he wrote on the ground. 
and he stood up watch this and he said let him that is without sin cast the first stone and he stood down and wrote again and as he wrote the second time they all began to leave being convicted in their own conscience Jesus used to judge others to condemn others you have to be without sin Serving when he was up and he 
It was Job's righteous. Amen. 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 Yet his friends accused him chapter after chapter after chapter. They judged Job. And you know what? They were wrong. In the end, God told Job's accusers, you go to Job and you ask Job to pray for you. And God said, if you don't, what Job has been through will be a wall. And I was wrong. I criticized others. And I was wrong. I'm sorry. I've asked God to forgive me and as many as I can. I've asked Him to forgive me. There have been times I've been wrong. Paul said, I want it to stop. It's not our work. I'm not worthy. Neither are you. Right. And we could be wrong. Right. A preacher, an old preacher, gave this testimony. Both of you. He was going to preach a revival meeting. And he was traveling to this town on a train. And there was a lady that sat right across the aisle from this old preacher with a baby. And the preacher was trying to study and prepare his sermon for that night. And the baby kept crying. It cried, and it cried, and it cried. And finally, the old preacher couldn't handle it any longer. And he looked at that woman and said, I don't know what to think of a mother who can't keep her own child quiet. This is the testimony that he gave himself. The lady spoke up and said, Sir, I'm not his mother. I'm not a child. Mother. And the lady said, she in a different car than the other. He said, well, why don't you take the baby to her or get her to come out here and tend to the child? And the lady said, she can't. She's in the car door. In a casket. And we'll take it up home. And I was just taking care of her child. Preacher went to the revival, stood up, and shared the testimony. And I've shared with you.
another man's soul. Do you hear what Paul is asking? Yes. Who do you think you are? Yes. We criticize each other and judge one another. And the truth is they may be weak spiritually. Spiritually, they might not be in a good place. Spiritually, they might be in hell. Paul said, who do you think you are? The judge. The only hell is accountable to their own master. Right. And Paul said, you need to understand that Jesus suffered, bled, died, rose again, that he might be the Lord over That's good. all. That's good. Good good. He said, I want it to stop. And I want it to stop now. Hey. I want you to stand with me while our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed.